Hello all. Good afternoon. Beautiful sunny day outside. Nice and warm in here though. Anyways, I'm going to be, uh, if you come up close to this seagull, you can see how far I got with the chainsaw. I got most of the feathers all in there and that's good enough to, to uh, satisfy the subconscious eye. Stuff like this here though I got to get rid of. What I want to do is get the shape of the head quite a bit better than what it is. Uh, as you can see, this is a very outside of the log. Grain is running this way, so i got to be careful with that beak. But I know wood is pretty strong, so I'll see what I can do with that. And I want to get the shape of the head more proper to what it's supposed to be. And if I look at birds that are perched like this, most of them, they have their head down. But as soon as they hear something, their, their neck pops up right away. So anyways, I'm going to go over the tools that's as far as I'm going to go with the chainsaw. I could go a little bit farther, but I want to show you the different tools I use. So this is one of my favorite power carving tools. Okay. Uh, Makita die grinder, variable speed, lots of torque. Okay. Uh, you, could just, you can use just the tip of that tool for finesse, but one thing, just like any other tool, never let go of this. Never let your hand slide up. Anyways, I just want to say, my favorite tool... Uh, it's a, called a four inch bullet burr, structured carbide. This one's a saber tooth. They're actually for ice carving, but this thing will mill through the wood like, like a chainsaw, or you can use the tip for finesse. I've done whole complete uh, human figures and drapery and everything with this as a finish, and it leaves almost like a sanded finish. So I'm gonna start with that to rough it out. And then if you look at these tools, uh, these are all structured carbide, structured carbide, structured carbide. This is a fluted cutter, little dovetail. Uh, diamond. I use diamonds, but just mainly the sharp ones for, for cutting some lines. And then I use ruby carvers for finishing. Uh, I got a whole bunch of different shaped ruby carvers and stuff in there. And then this is the newest tool I've just been experimenting with, and I'm going to do the first video with it. It's called, it's by Mampa Tools out of, out of uh, South Korea. And that thing's got carbides, little carbide inserts that you can rotate three times and you can buy replacement carbides also. And I did the furring, I call it furring, feathering on the, on the snowy owl this morning with it. And now I'm going to, once I get this thing rough to shape, I'm going to use that to do some of the furring, but that'll probably be at the end of the video. Uh, I tend to do the eyes and the beak and all that stuff first. Uh, get all that done, uh, smoothed out and everything into shape. And then I prefer to do the furring or herring or feathering or whatever you want to call it after. Because the texture, it's just a texture and a lot of it all looks the same. Whether it's fur or, or fine feathers or whatever. Okay, so I'll start with this one. And I'm going to do time lapse photo because it's going to take a few minutes and I don't want the video to be three hours long. So you can...
So I've roughed it out with the big die grinder, okay? Uh, kind of roughly where I want the shape. Uh, if you come around this side. I see the eye placement is, is almost on this line. So I'm going to put the eye, I'm going to say about right there. Probably about roughly that big. And I noticed, I just look for main shapes, okay? There's kind of like this, there's a little divot all the way along, a groove that it sits in, and then it has a bulge underneath and a little bulge on top, eyelids or whatever, okay? So now, when I go to this side, what I do a lot of times to keep my eyes in the same place, if this was a little bit shorter, I could look from dead above, but I just put my finger on it, where I want it roughly, and I look from the side here again, and I look, okay, you know, it's got to be pretty well in line with the top of the beak. So I'm going to say about there. And if I look from above as much as I can on my tippy toes, I think it's got to come ahead a little tiny bit. So there's about roughly the center of the eye. So I'll make it roughly around the same size. This will change a hundred times before I'm done. It might move up and down and back and forth. And again, it's got kind of a divot area right there where the eyes set in and it bulges around the top and the bottom, something like that. Okay, this is kind of a high point though. And then everything kind of shallows in from there, shallows in from there. And we'll get started on it and see what it looks like. So I think I'm going to start with my little, uh, it's actually a cuts all structured carbide bit. Just show you. See how it's plugged up a little? Watch. Two seconds. This thing will look almost like new. How's that for clean? It's got a couple little marks on it, but nothing major. Okay, so what I'm using here as far as the tool is a Fordham SR variable speed or Fordham SR reversible and I have this variable speed that I buy they're 15 amp 120 volt so I can run angle grinders or anything I want off there Uh, I'm going to actually run it on full speed. So this is a variable speed or a full speed switch. When I'm using this and I'm going to be doing heavier cuts, I run it full speed like this. I'll do this side first. Lighting ain't very good on this side. You'd be able to see it better on the other side. So it's just a matter of kind of working it. Yeah. 
These will all come down a lot yet. I see I gotta, I think I gotta tip this eye down a little bit in the front. I want the front about right pointing to the beak there. So I'm just getting mounds of shape. But it's just a matter of going for it. Making it work for you. Whatever looks right in your mind's eye or your subconscious, it starts to kind of just fall in place. So I find I cut the lines fairly sharp and rigid to begin with. And throughout the whole process you're kind of doing that. Once you cut lines to, to a certain depth, you're committed. To a point, to a point. There's always lots of wood there. Now I know this beak has some funny shape to it, and because of, this is only the first one I've really carved in detail, only the second one I've ever done, I'm going to look at the pictures once in a while, and uh, if I'm not sure about the beak, because I know there's a part that goes kind of like this here it's like a little horseshoe curve in there so I think I got to come in a long ways on this beak into the face also And again, this isn't fine sculpture. This is a commission. And there's four birds to it. And I always put more time in than what they're paying for, but you still gotta keep it realistic. I'm not doing this just as a hobby. It's also a job, so. You gotta try and be proud of your art, but still do a good job. Make, make the people happy. So there's one side roughed out. 